A wise man once said, to truly live, you must do one thing each day that scares you. Congratulations, you're listening to The Ron Van Dam Show. Scary, huh? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's The Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Oh, here I am. No, I'm over here. I'm over here. Here I am. Yeah, my eyes are up here. Excuse me, my eyes are up here. God. Stop staring at my breasts. Jeez, I mean... I don't mind, really. It's just not supposed to be like that. My eyes are up. Hello. Make yourself comfortable as if you're not already. I would say take your shoes off, but I have a feeling they're not on. So let's just skip that part. Ready? All right. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to perform for you like a little monkey on a stick. And then you sit there and you applaud and you laugh and all that. Okay. Do we have the rules down? Good. Yeah, you, uh, you in the front row over there. Yeah, cross your legs. Yeah, don't, don't. Sp- that's. I don't want to see that. Don't spread. Cross your legs, but thank you. I'm making believe there's an audience here, but of course there can't be. So I'm just making believe. <laughs> I'll do it. I mean, I, I don't really like the social distancing, but I got to tell you something. In some cases, it's not so bad. I mean, I, I I don't have to see people that I had to see before that I really didn't like. So this is very convenient in that sense. I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> there are some people that, hey, Ron, Ron you want to you go out to lunch? Ron, Ron uh, can we meet for lunch? You want to meet for lunch? And I kept putting them off. Now, like, I don't even, they don't even ask. It's, it's it. something always works for somebody, but not to this extent. Anyway, welcome to the program. I am Ron Van Dam. This is the Ron Van Dam Show right here on New England Broadcasting and in selected, on selected radio stations across the country. We can be heard on many platforms. Most of them are only like 10 inches high. We're uh, on iHeartRadio iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Radio Public, YouTube, Podbean Network, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Player FM, and Podbay. We're on these things each and every day with brand new episodes. We've got over 1,500 episodes. I've been doing this since you were born, sort of, maybe not, maybe that's an exaggeration. I don't know when you were born because... I just don't. I don't really want to know, to be honest with you. Ron, how, how old do you think I am? Um, I don't care. How about that answer? It doesn't matter to me. If you can talk and reason and, and be a caring, loving individual, I don't care how old you are. Let's make sure you're over 21. Let's start there, okay? But after that, I you know, I know some people in their mid-20s who act like they're 60 or 70 years old. They call themselves old souls. Uh, You know, you don't have to do that. It's just at a certain point, we're just all, we've experienced, we've all experienced enough in life to say, okay, we all get it. You know, it's just, (laughs) it's, it's fine. It's just fine. Everything's fine. Sure, right. Anyway, later on in the program, we're going to be speaking to a young lady who's written quite a few books and she's been on television and all over the place. She's uh, 
She's going to tell us how to eat right. And some people may say, Ron, is this the time? Is this a time for that? Yeah. Yeah. Because even, yeah, there's food around. There's, there's food and you can eat. One of the great activities at this point is, is cooking. Is, is enjoying being creative and, and putting some, some stuff together and making some fine meals. I mean, it's, it's yeah. So uh, we're going to speak to her a little bit later on in the program. And I hope that you stay with me until then. I hope you're still here now. How about that? Yeah, right. Oh, God. I, uh, you know, at times like this, uh, I go back to my childhood. I don't know why. I've been going back to my childhood a lot. Uh, I don't do that very frequently because I'm so embroiled in my adult life. But sometimes I'll go back to my childhood. It's interesting because some people have horrifically horrible childhoods. I mean, horrible. I, they were they could have been abused. That's a possibility, or just ignored. Just not. You know, maybe your parents were not huggers. You know, they were just like standoffish. Like you know, you have your life. I'll bring you up, and then you leave, and that'll be it. Uh, that's not very nurturing. So you grow up with all these uh, kind of, you know, looking for attention kind of problems. Yeah, and some people, um, their parents could have left them and they were raised by grandparents or something or a pack of wolves or a pack of cigarettes. I don't know. There are all different combinations of childhood. Some people had perfectly fine childhoods. Then they became adults, and then they couldn't, like, grasp anything else. So we've all got these problems. Childhood is such a a, a foundation for the rest of your life. And I say to people all the time, you know, your childhood was a long time ago. You're an adult now, so why are you going back to your your childhood with all this agony that, that you claim that you have? And, you know, I, it, it's because it stays with you. It becomes part of your foundation, part of your, like, psychological DNA. So how do you get rid of that? Alcohol. That's what you do. That's alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Oh, what did you think I meant? <laughs> liquor stores are doing very well right now, by the way. <laughs> Come on in. We got plenty of liquor. Come on in. Yeah, yeah, we'll take care of it. It's all right. It's temporary, man. It's temporary. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, this show still um, every weekday, just as we always have been. So you know, there you go. I've been I've been uh, practicing uh, uh, brushing my teeth. You know, you you do things that that you never thought of doing before, and and I it might be cathartic. It might be a a good thing. To, to go through this process because it really, you really slow it down. You know, life just like swooshes by on the, on the perimeters. But now it's like everything is, is so pronounced because there's nothing else to do. So yesterday I was brushing my teeth, which I, by the way, do every day. Uh, it make it sound like I live in England or something where they brush like once a year. I think that's the explanation. I don't think teeth can be that yellow otherwise. I don't know what it is. Is it the tea? Is that what it is? Maybe. So I was brushing my teeth, and I was saying this, you know, uh, am I brushing properly? And I actually went to the Internet, the International Highway of Information, and, uh, and I actually looked up a few websites how to properly brush your teeth, and uh, I found out, hey, I've been doing it wrong all these years. You put the toothbrush in your mouth, not up your ass, Ron. Oh, my God, I didn't know. Nah, you know, I've been brushing properly, but not not really, really well. Found out that you have to brush for an inordinate amount of time. Yeah, I found out a couple of things. First, I found out that uh, when I wash my hands, I have to start singing songs to myself. And when the song's over, my hands have been properly washed. I, I never knew. I never sang songs while I was washing my hands. Apparently, you sing happy birthday to you, not me, you, twice. And then your hands are, are properly lathered and, and, and washed. Or you can sing the alphabet song, although most of us have a problem getting through that one at all. <laughs> if you haven't sung the alphabet song in a long time, you're going to find you're going to 
start having trouble around uh, LMNOP. Um, after, after, yeah, it just, it gets, it gets muddy. It just gets muddy. I, I don't know. <laughs> so I found out I have to wash my hands for at least 20 seconds for it to be effective at all. I never, ever knew that. Had this not happened, I would never know something like that. Okay. Then I learned that uh, brushing your teeth, a similar situation. Uh, it has to be for a certain period of time. You can't just put the toothbrush in your mouth and touch all your teeth and call it a day. Apparently, there's there you've got to be in there for a while. You got to pack a lunch and, and and get in there and 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 manicure each each tooth. I mean, I I I don't know. Um, flossing. I I've been flossing wrong. I I I don't know how I miss this, <laughs> but I'm supposed to. I don't even want to go through it because it's so disgusting. But I've been flossing wrong. I've been brushing my teeth wrong. I've been sleeping wrong, apparently. Ron, don't you get a good night's sleep? Yeah, not not all the time. That's because you're sleeping wrong. I'm sleeping wrong. I, I don't know how to sleep, you're saying. I've been doing it every day all my life. Yeah, but you're not doing it right. I didn't. I didn't know that I was doing it wrong. Sometimes I'll wake up when my back will hurt when I wake up or, or, or my knee will hurt when I wake up. I don't know if that's age, uh, but my, uh, my doctor uh, said that I was sleeping wrong. And I said, well, I, how, do you have a book about this? How do I sleep right? Oh, there's a lot of, uh, do, you, do you watch the news before you go to bed? Sometimes don't do that. It, it stimulates your mind. It makes you think you don't want that. I've been doing this wrong. I know. Uh, do you do you make the room very dark? Yes. Do you fall asleep with the TV on? Sometimes that's wrong. That's wrong. You're sleeping wrong. You're just doing. You're you're, you're so messed up, Ron. You're just doing everything wrong. Did you know that I'm eating wrong? Yeah. It's not the foods that I eat. It's anything that I put in my mouth. I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. I mean, you can extend that conversation, but I'm not going to go there. Apparently, uh, if you eat too fast, you take in too much air. I <laughs> see. I didn't know taking in too much air would be a problem, but apparently it is. It can give you gas. And um, I do have gas like we all do. It's just a question of if they show up at inappropriate times, like during sex. That usually doesn't work very well. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, but that's not good. That that does not work well at all. That's hard to explain. So apparently I'm eating wrong. I'm eating too fast. Well, it's because I like the food. I mean, once I start tasting it, I go, oh, I want more of this like really fast. No, Ron, you put the food in your mouth and you chew it. Oh, do I have to sing songs again? Do I have to sing happy birthday? Do I have to do the alphabet song with alphabet soup? I mean, do is this another time thing? Well, yeah, kind of is. You got to chew the food to its to its best chewing abilities and then brush those teeth wrong. Am I swallowing the food properly? Probably not. Is it supposed to go down my throat? I've been doing it wrong. I've been chewing the food, spitting it in a cup, and shoving. Yeah, you know where it's going. <laughs> shoving. Did I say shoving? <laughs> what does that mean? There's no word shoving. <sighs> Shoveling is what I meant to say. This, this is like autocorrect. <laughs> I have no autocorrect in me. I, I say the wrong thing, and then I have to correct myself. Do you do that? Do you text people, and then uh, every single time you read the text back, and it's, oh, God, I spelled that wrong. Now it has an entirely different meaning. That or these people must think I am a total moron, like I can't spell simple words. Instead of saying from, I said form. Uh <sighs> Oh, no, they're going to think I'm an idiot and I can't spell like they're going to find me out. So what do you do? You text back the, the, the proper spelling of the word to show that you're aware that you did it wrong. 
And then you, you, you start yelling at your, at your phone. You go, I, I thought you had autocorrect. What the hell's going on here? You're supposed to be better than I am. You're supposed to know more than I do. <laughs> anyway, getting back to, uh, yeah. So eating properly, apparently uh, you chew your food like really, really chewy, chewy. To the point where, and at a point, it, the food's not even tasty. You're just chewing. You're just chewing. It's like when you have a piece of gum and the flavor runs out and you keep chewing anyway, like for another three hours, you're just chewing plastic. It is pointless. There's no flavor, but it's, you know, that's what you do. Well, it's the same with, I guess, chewing your food. You chew the food, you swallow it. Then you take another bite full of food. You don't, you don't shove it in your mouth while you're still chewing. Apparently, so that way um, you won't you won't gain a lot of weight. You'll get full faster. Not that that's my goal anymore. And you'll reduce the amount of air that you take in when you're eating. That's reduce the amount of air. I found this out. I started chewing more. Guess what? I'm still farting like a bastard. I'm still doing something wrong. <laughs> My doctor tells me every time I go to the doctor, Ron, uh, you, you're just doing it all wrong. <laughs> why, why get off my ass, will you? Like you're supposed to be my supportive physician. You're not supposed to chew me out every time you see me. Ron, are, are you are you eating too much red meat? I I guess. Oh, Ron, the hell am I going to do with you? Don't you get it? Yeah, I do, but red meat's tasty. I don't I don't even want to get into that. I shouldn't be eating red meat. And it's not because it's I I because it's not good for me. It's because I don't want to eat animals like that. I I can't. I I can't. I love animals. I, I can't imagine eating them. So I'm an enigma. I know I am. I'm a big time enigma. <laughs> anyway, there you go. So uh, we're going to be speaking to our guest uh, rather shortly at this time. How are you doing, by the way? Does any other talk show host just stop in the middle of the show and ask you how you're doing? It's pointless because it's not as good as you could be doing, quite obviously. So I know your response, but I'm trying to make believe I care about you. And the effort is, is, is tremendous on my part. It's not the gift, it's the thought that counts. And that's what's happening here. I'm thinking of you, but I have nothing to give you except this show. Take it as, as, as it appears, whatever. Oh, man. I've been doing some garden work, even though yesterday it was freezing outside and it actually snowed in the morning where I live. I did some gardening. Um, and I, I don't know why. <laughs> I, just, I just figured it's time for me to pick up some garden tools and make it look like I'm doing something. And I started doing some gardening, and then I realized you can't garden when there's snow on the ground. Stop it. Just stop it. Pull yourself together. So on the show, we have a couple of interesting things coming up. We're going to be speaking uh, later in the week to uh, the former mayor of, uh, of a town in Israel. And in Israel, they apparently are manufacturing these drugs and vaccines for this, you know, this uh, Corona thing. And, uh, that's the only place that's doing it. They're all hopped up about it, and they're they're mass producing this stuff. Um, we're going to find out what that drug is. Is it a hoax? Is it is it just in their minds? Could it actually work? I don't know. Um, I don't like to spread word that is that is not viable, but we'll weed it out together. So we're going to do that. And uh, also, uh, we have a, a new uh, a partner in, in our enterprise here. Uh, Stephanie is going to join us once a week. 
She is a uh, she's she's a mother with a child. Um, she's she's very actively uh, crazy and um, such as we all are. And she's got some great ideas to uh, to pass the time and and uh, she she's uh, she's a riot. So she's going to be joining us once a week as well. As we all uh, need to smile, need to laugh, and and uh, it, we will all get through this. That's a fact. So it's just a question of uh, the duration. Other than that, we this is a good social test. This is a good social test. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on, shall we? <sighs> Try to stop me. I mean, you can you can hit the stop button, I guess. Please don't do that. But please don't do that. All right, let's talk to our guest about eating properly, even during these crazy times. Hi, Ron. Good morning. Good morning to you. Sophie Egan joins us now. She's a lecturer, a New York Times contributor, uh, uh, work at the Culinary Institute of America. She's all over the place. She knows uh, good food and how to be a conscious eater, which is what the book is, Making Food Choices That Are Good For You, Others, and the Planet. And uh, even though we're in a situation, we can still try to eat as healthy as possible and knowing what is good for you and what isn't and what is better for you than might even be good. Uh, There's a lot to go through, Sophie. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, what, uh, What made you decide to write this book on this subject? I was really inspired by the statistic that 8 in 10 Americans are utterly confused about what to eat. (laughs) And I think I can certainly relate to that. Even working in food, I'm sometimes in the past have been confused. There's a lot of information overload and decision fatigue to overcome. And the book, How to Be a Conscious Eater, provides a three-part mental checklist to try to simplify those food choices uh, by making food choices that are good for you, others, and the planet, but also try to widen the lens and help make food choices from a more holistic yeah. standpoint. I, I think we're all confused by, by labeling uh, these days, uh, organic, cage-free, uh, grass-fed. Uh, there, there's so many different uh, labels on, on various types of products, and it seems like the public thinks that the more labels are on there, the better it is. Is that necessarily the case? <laughs> No. It, it, in fact, um, think about foods that have no labels at all, yeah. like fresh produce, right? right. Those, the ones that have no billboards or are, are not swathed in signage are often the best for us. They're the humble beans in the bulk section. Um, they're, you know, the, the tub of oats or the, uh-huh. or the bag of oats from the bulk section. And it, as mentioned, all that fresh produce. So there's so much uh, information to, to sort of uh, state passed quickly on yeah. the front of most packages. Um, by and large, the information you really want to be paying attention to are not a lot of those claims, some of which are not regulated. Organic is one that is. Right. Um, but the simplest information from a health standpoint is really the, the boring black and white uh, information on the back that's the nutrition facts panel and the ingredients list. Interesting. I, I had a conversation with a chef recently that told me that uh, frozen vegetables were actually healthier than fresh ones, and that kind of flipped everything that most people have ever thought. <laughs> yeah, there, frozen sort of gets a bad rap, right? It, yeah. In the U.S., we have a real bias for fresh. Yes. Uh, but especially now when we're trying to economize and when we're trying to make uh, healthy foods last right. long, right. the freezer is your friend. Uh, and frozen produce, uh, you know, I'm sure it, it depends on the producer in terms of n- nutritional value. Right. But more, more importantly, I would say it's just a great way to um, enjoy more produce. And, and more is really what matters. Yeah. What's the difference between organic and, and not? What, what does that label mean? Sure. So organic is one of the labels in the health claims that is actually the most rigorously uh, verified. It's a third-party uh-huh. certification. Um, and it really means there's no synthetic pesticides, no growth hormones, no antibiotics. Um, in the case of eggs, it also means vegetarian feed. So it, it really is better for, uh, for us uh, in terms of not consuming pesticides and for farm workers and for the planet because it's really not harming um, surrounding ecosystems, habitat, and so forth. Uh, that said, it's really tough for most of us to eat organic all of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are ways to sort of allocate your grocery dollars um, through helpful lists like uh, the Education um, Environmental Working Groups, yeah. Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. So you can, you know, know when organic is the most worth it and when yeah. it's not. Yeah. 
Well, I, the, the book is, is, is just full of, of information, by the way. We're just like skimming not even hardly any of it here. Uh, the book is, is very complete, I must say, by the way. Um, water, that, that fascinated me. You, you, you have a section about water, and we're all into the spring water and specially imported water. And you, you say something that's quite interesting in that book as far as that's concerned. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. What I say is basically tap water beats all. Um, hmm. Well, I should say water beats all uh-huh. and tap beats bottle. Uh, so really comes down to as opposed to what. So if we're talking about from purely a health standpoint, mm-hmm. um, as your daily hydration source, we want to be not drinking sugar sweetened beverages right. or soda and right. making water our default. Right. But when you're drinking water, the best thing to do is just drink from the tap. In the United States, we're incredibly lucky. We're Mm -hmm. at least 90% of people have um, tap water that is uh, perfectly safe. And guess what? Um, It's free. Uh, And then from a plastic standpoint, it's far better for the planet. Um, So sometimes when you're buying bottled water, it's actually not even uh, subject to strict regulations in terms of the the quality and contaminants. And you're paying for something 2,000 times uh, for something that would just come from your tap. Now, there are important exceptions, Mm -hmm. as we know, Mm -hmm. right? Flint and other places. Um, By and large, um, and and it's Right, and if you're concerned, you can get um, filters, and you can have your water tested. Yeah, um, yeah, filters help as well. And I, I'm always thinking that spring water is like some guy sitting in a bathtub with no clothes on, filling jugs. I, I know that's not the case, but I, I get <laughs> I get that picture. It's usually tap water. It, it really, yeah, I know. It's and and then it's put in the the plastic jugs and sold. Does any of that? plastic uh container stuff actually get into the water of where the water sits i mean does that happen mm-hmm. hmm. there is some concern that um it's 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 uh if it sits in your car say and gets heated we yeah. know that plastics when they're heated like you never want to microwave your food in plastic yeah. for for leaching and, and contamination of the food yeah. um, or liquids that are in them mm. uh, but the bigger issue or more common issue is that most plastic is not being recycled in the u.s is only nine percent of plastic I waste know. is recycled which is is unthinkable and so what's happening is actually it's leaching into the ground when it's just sitting in landfill I it's know. polluting our oceans yeah. um and there are projections that uh of the ocean is going to be proportionally more plastic waste than marine yeah. life uh, um, if we don't really change uh, you know, curb our habits yeah. there. And it's actually getting worse now that China is not taking our recyclables anymore. A lot of companies, and they're not talking about it, are, are not really separating and not really recycling what they pick up from your, your curb site. It used to be, but now they're, they can't sell it, so why bother? So it's actually getting worse. Uh, so I'm, I'm, glad exactly. you, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, it's, it's not a, a, not a huge dictionary book, but the pages are, are chock full of stuff. They're, they're color coded too, which is cool. That's kind of fun. Uh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great book. Um, very quickly, let's talk about uh, meal kits and things like that. A lot of people are buying their food through the mail. Now, Uh, a lot of companies are shipping ingredients and that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, under this particular situation here, uh, is that a safe thing? Yes. Meal kits. So I did kind of a little breakdown in the book, uh, uh, how to be a conscious eater, uh, sort of comparing meal kits to other things you might be doing. So meal kit versus eating at a restaurant, meal kit yeah. versus takeout, well, et cetera. Can't, yeah, can't um, eat at a restaurant anymore, but okay. <laughs> can't eat at a restaurant. So today I think they're even more relevant, right? Mm-hmm. Any, any form of delivery is, is more relevant. Right. Um, one of the most, most important things is that it's allowing you to vote with your, uh, or it's, it's allowing you to prepare your food yourself. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, and that's, one of the best ways to get transparency sure about what you're putting in your body. You can also find out there's a quite a range in, in the different meal kit providers. And so some of them are really all about um, organic, if that's important to you, or uh-huh. locally sourced, if that's important to you. Uh, you can tailor to your you know dietary restrictions if, if those are applicable. Um, and some of them are much better than others in terms of their environmental footprint of their packaging, because yeah. that's really been the biggest concern. But actually some lifestyle um, excuse me, life cycle assessments of meal kits versus other, you know, going to the grocery store, buying a whole tub of sour cream and using just one dollop mm-hmm. for a recipe. Mm-hmm. The biggest concern is food waste when yeah. you aren't yeah. buying in those pre-portioned packages. True. So That's on true. balance, meal kits are great for you uh, and your family. Uh, and, and they're pretty, yeah. pretty solid on the environmental marks as well. I, I had a friend that did one of those diet things where they ship you the meal in, in the mail and there are plenty of those things. 
and uh, we took a look at the, the box of sodium count in in that stuff. It was like mm. through the roof. I'm surprised the sodium wasn't leaking through the cardboard. Oh, wow. Yeah, but they tend to do that. You really <laughs> you got to look at those labels. Right. And I want to say, I mean, having pre-made meals shipped to you is much different from having raw ingredients in right. a meal kit that right. you are preparing a Correct. fresh, healthy meal Correct. and where you can really check the nutritional information, the sourcing information ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. It's how but to be absolutely a, checking labels is, is important. Very important. How to be a conscious eater, especially in, in this uh, day and time, you can still eat really, really well. There's plenty of food around. Uh, that's, that's not a problem. So you can still make the proper choices. How to be a conscious eater, making food choices that are good for you, others, and the planet. Sophie Egan, it's available everywhere. Is there a website they can visit? Absolutely. That's SophieEgan.com. And that's E-G-A-N, by the way. Uh, Sophie, thank you so much for your time today. Great book. Pleasure speaking to you. And there you go. All right. I'm going to be back tomorrow. Uh, and that's that's not a promise. That's a threat. Uh, there's no question about this. Uh, we're going to have a good time tomorrow, and you're going to have a good time today. Uh, enjoy yourself. Be creative. Relax. And uh, I wish you peace. Peace.